there's a new Paper Mario. Wahoo! As in, that is exciting news. Now, I know, you know, we all know that Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door is like one of the greatest games of all time. And the Paper Mario franchise and series has had a number of ups and downs and most mostly downs. But there's a new game in town, and how is it? Well, it, it's okay. In Paper Mario The Origami King, you play as Nintendo poster boy, Mario. Except for this time, well, you basically are a poster because you're made out of paper. Don't worry though, because so is the rest of the world, because it's a paper craft world filled with paper. And what can you do with paper? Fold it. It's the Origami Festival in Toad Town and everyone is excited to get involved. Get involved. Wouldn't you know it though, everything has gone wrong and Princess Peach has folded herself into an origami obsessed nightmare, yearning for all to be folded. Don't knock it till you try it, Mario. Origami's pretty easy. Here, watch. Okay, so first you fold it like this, then you fold it like this. Mountain fold? Where are the mountains? How does this even obey physics? I've changed my mind, Mario. Run. In your journey, you'll find Olivia, an origami individual who wishes to put an end to the reign of origami terror. And she'll aid you on your journey to save the kingdom from the various folded origami soldiers of the Mushroom Kingdom, of whom there's apparently no way to save them. Olivia, I've only known you for five minutes and you're already telling me to kill. You're not only saving the Mushroom Kingdom from the various folded baddies, you've got the ringmaster of it all, Prince Ollie, who uses arcane folding techniques to basically destroy everything. Even Luigi dies. A moment of silence for our fallen brother. Jesus, Mario, talk about a short moment. Do you not want to grieve? And so starts your adventure across this paper world as you set out to destroy various streamers strewn out across the land and get involved in all sorts of hijinks and whimsy. It's an adventure game filled with fun and silliness. And to be quite honest, it's, it's kind of fun. Each area is filled with its own sense of weirdness and bizarre scenes that'll often leave you slightly agape with perplexion, swiftly followed by a wry grin. Yes! This is a Paper Mario after all. High levels of whimsy and silliness are top billing for these games, and to be honest, the Origami King manages to do this swimmingly. Whether you're smashing your way through a samurai theme park or jumping your way along a disco dance floor in a pyramid, the Origami King constantly has these fun and silly moments rife for hijinks. This is frequently helped by Olivia, who is an incredible goofball, and as well as various companions you meet along the way. Classic Paper Mario fans may grumble and moan because sure, that's all well and good, but you're not taking part in a WWE wrestling match tournament, or you're not solving a murder on a train, or, or going to the actual moon. But the Origami King does manage to entertain you frequently through its fun and silly characters. Sure, 99% of the characters are toads, boring, forgettable, monotonous toads. And fine, yes, that sucks. But I actually kind of quite liked trying to hunt down and find 
all the hidden toads across the land. As you explore, you'll find toads in various precarious predicaments, folded into a pinwheel, or butterfly, or a dog. And the only way to save them is through force, obviously. Otherwise, they can be stuck in holes and even fax machines, and there is an odd sense of achievement that comes from hunting down each and every hidden toad in the game. I'm aware this all comes from my feverish completionist desire, Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. But so what? It is still quite nice and satisfying to hunt down these toads and to interact with this weird and wild world as you try to work out where an origami toad might be hiding within this town. As you explore across the world, there's all the classics of adventuring you'll have to take part in, like dungeons and solving puzzles and platforming segments. And it's here that I really begin to realize that maybe this is actually a kid's game. And sometimes these platforming segments can be a little, uh, dang, they can be a little, uh, they can be a little, aha, uh, saw that one coming, uh, they can be a little simple. But you also get to use motion controls, as this is Nintendo after all, to use Mario's new horrifyingly long arms to peel, tear, and smash your way through your troubles. They control just like real human arms. Now, you may have realized I'm trying to tiptoe around a subject here. You know, not really mention something, and that's how you go about curing the origami soldiers. Through death, or murder. Paper Mario has combat. It even has turn-based combat, which is what all the people wanted. However, the combat in Paper Mario the Origami King is probably not what people wanted. In Paper Mario the Origami King, combat takes place on a spinning wheel stage of nightmares where you'll be tasked in lining enemies up in as few moves as possible in order to efficiently destroy them. If you do this, well, most combat encounters can be finished off in a single round. The enemy is not even having a chance to act, thanks to a power boost from a successful lineup. If your brain begins to melt and boil and things don't go according to plan, then without the power bonus, you'll find yourself doing significantly less damage and the enemies will take this time to destroy you. These micro puzzles, they start out actually being kind of interesting and to be honest, sort of fun. Sure, they don't actually provide really any challenge at all and they feel like, what, what's the point in them? I mean, like, what age rating is this game again? Seven? Oh, it's a game for kids. But at the same time, you're all too rapidly realize that, well, this little sliding puzzle is really tedious and really boring. You see, the combat doesn't really do anything. There's no experience points, so you don't need to get stronger for bosses. So instead, all you're doing is maintaining the absolutely broken economy of Toad Town. Mario will walk around with several thousands of coins jingle jangling in his pocket, but what do you use them for? One use is to ask the various toads you've saved to solve the ring puzzle for you. But if you think I'm asking someone who still flaps around like a butterfly, you've got another thing coming. But you also use those coins for buying weapons to use in fights and whatnot, bigger and stronger weapons. However, your weapons also do break the more you use them in combat, so you're ultimately buying weapons so you can get coins through combat so that you can then replace the weapons that broke by fighting in combat to get money so you can buy the weapons to fight in the combat to get the money to buy the weapons that are breaking because you're fighting in the combat. Oh god, it's a horrible recursive loop. It's when you begin to notice this that the combat dissolves into just something that you actively try and avoid. Like, the only times you ever really do the combat will be when you think that, hey, maybe it will lead to, like, another hidden toad somewhere or, like, a hidden item. And it's this problem that around about at the start of the third area, just combat, which isn't necessarily bad, like, it's a perfectly fine mechanical system, it's just so dull that just about a little bit before halfway through the game, you get tired of it and want to actively avoid doing it which is wild. The game will still have you do some encounters, however, and as the game goes on, puzzles become increasingly difficult, and depending on how much of an old person's brain you have, 
you may sit there dumbfounded and reluctantly enlist the aid of the various toads, with mixed results. They'll either completely solve the puzzle for you, or do the first step that you could work out for yourself and leave the rest to you, except you're equally as confused now as you were before you spent coins on these charlatans. The thing is, as I've said, you've got enough coins in your pocket to buy a Zimbabwean loaf of bread. So having to spend a hundred coins for basically the game to solve itself? Well, it's, it's pocket change. It is an inconsequential amount of money to just have the toads solve the puzzle for you every single combat. And to some extent, it does remove the tedious aspect of the combat. So I don't know, I, that's not good, but at least there's a solution and it's called letting the game play itself. That said, an area where the combat gets a little more interesting is during boss encounters. Here, things are inverted. The boss is in the center and you're on the outside of a maze of arrows and effects trying to create a path for Mario to deal hefty damage to various foes. Each boss tends to have its own gimmick that requires some quick thinking and precise positioning and they're actually kind of quite fun and unique all round. Overall, Paper Mario The Origami King continues to shine in areas that are kind of unique to the Paper Mario series, but sadly falls flat in areas that kind of feel like hangs hanging on to bits and pieces of the previous installments. Like, it is a fun and fanciful adventure game full of character and enjoyment and laughter and it's just like the world's so well realized and put together and it looks so nice that all these areas have so much character and like the depth of a finely folded piece of origami paper. It's not an RPG. It's not a turn-based battler. All these bits and pieces that are just the game clinging on to its heritage and they feel like callbacks more than implementations of a system, they just end up falling flatter than an unfolded piece of paper. For all the enjoyment and fun and whimsy of the Paper Mario The Origami King story, it, uh, it's getting through that story through the combat systems and the, those mechanics, they just end up getting in the way more than anything, which sucks and it's lame because the Paper, Ma Paper Mario The Origami King is genuinely a very fun and silly story that generally will always put a smile on your face, but also you do have to sit through boring, tedious combat that they could have just gotten rid of and just made it a platformer or something. It would have just been easier. Hello, and thank you for watching my video about Paper Mario and the Origami King. Here I am on far too hot of a day, realizing that somewhere along the lines of making this, I did it wrong. Like, like these bits, you're meant to fold up inside it. How? Ah, oh, origami, am I right? So, Paper Mario and the Origami King, it was a fun game, a fun romp of a game, and hopefully this video was, was that as well, laced with terrible folding mechanics and combat stuff. Anyway, uh, please feel free to like or comment or subscribe, maybe, uh, etc. Oh god, this is terrible. Uh, otherwise, there are videos that you can look at. There's one here, which is about board games. It's about a game called Tang Garden. There's no, no folding in that, but it does look nice. Similarly, there is a video here, which is about something else that I can't fully remember, but it's good, probably good enough to remember. 
Anyway, thank you and goodbye.